Okay, so we are ready to start the last session for today. And so Thomas Harvey will give a tutorial on genetic algorithms. But before he starts, um, let me say, so tomorrow we'll start at nine o'clock. Tomorrow morning, again, we'll have lectures in the morning and tutorials in the afternoon. Uh, the way to come in tomorrow will be uh, through the re revolving doors. And, and then you come, uh, I, I think the door will still be open. Another thing that I've been uh, asked to tell you is that there is no breakfast in Mansfield College unless you pre-book it several days in advance. So I guess if you want something for Thursday or Friday, you, you have to ask in advance, but not for tomorrow, for sure. So, uh, okay, Thomas, please. Is this working? Can everyone hear me? Alan, is that good from there, the back? Excellent. Right, okay, um, so yeah, this is continuing off of Steve's lecture from this morning. Uh, and now uh, for, well, uh, for some exercises. Uh, but just to begin with, I'm gonna start by giving a very quick review of GA, just kind of talking about, give you a reminder from the stuff we talked about this morning, before going over a piece of example code uh, that I've written. Uh, and then you'll have some exercises uh, from which uh, we'll be essentially editing this code to solve uh, some slightly different problems. So just to get things out of the way quickly, um, to, uh, I'm gonna be assuming that all of you have done this, it's been said multiple times now already, uh, that you've set up all the software that is uh, required for this, is listed at the end of the program uh, on the school's website. Um, and if you've done so, if you go into the materials section, uh, you can see tutorial two, uh, oh, sorry, tutorial two uh, on Monday here uh, for genetic algorithms. And there's two parts to this, there is a PDF and there is uh, a notebook. So this is the example code. We can just follow the link there uh, if you prefer. And also then the PDF is then these exercises, two of which I'll be going through in detail. Uh, and if you uh, manage to finish those, then you can go on to some uh, extension tasks that are also here. Right, okay, so let's get started. Um, so let's begin with this review of GA. With this. So as said this morning, uh, genetic algorithms, these are relatively simple algorithms that are based on evolution, uh, which are used for uh, optimization uh, and searching. Okay, and in particular, one thing they've proved to be very useful for uh, is for solving uh, Diophantine equations. And so then for a physics context, uh, like Steve was saying this morning, we've used this for uh, essentially string theory model building, trying to engineer uh, topological properties of uh, Calabi-Aus or vector bundles over, uh, over Calabi-Aus manifolds. <clears throat> so uh, the way this works is as follows. We begin with a population uh, of creatures. Uh, which I'm going to inevitably end up calling at some point individuals, but creatures or individuals are both uh, uh, kind of allowed terms for this. And these creatures are made up of two different parts, or I guess three parts in, in some sense. You have the genotype and a map to, breaking the chalk, and a map to the phenotype. Okay, map phi. Okay. Uh, so the actual genetic algorithm part of this, this all takes place uh, on the genotype side, okay? So for our purposes, uh, that genotype is just gonna be some binary string um, of some type. So that's basically the same color. It's some binary string. Okay, well the phenotype uh, is then actually the things that are of interest to whatever problem uh, we have at hand. So let's say we were solving, we wanted to solve some Diophantine equation, uh, then the phenotype would be some uh, proposed set of values for our variables. Not necessarily a solution at this stage, just uh, assignments of uh, assignments for our variables. So for example, you know, x equals two, y equals minus one, et cetera. Okay. Uh, but to actually, uh, well, we then have to start to have a measurement of uh, how good a particular proposed solution is, and that's then done through the fitness function. We have some other function, f, which maps us to some uh, real value. 
And the aim of GA, such as this called fitness, the aim of GA uh, is just to uh, maximize this value. Okay. So just as an example, let's say we were solving some Diophantine equation. So say we were solving the equation uh, h of x is equal to capital H, subject to the constraint uh, that g of x is equal to zero. We call this problem uh, hashtag for now. Okay. Then one possible fitness function we could choose uh, that then, if we were to maximize, would correspond to solutions to this uh, would be of the following type. So we define some function f of x equal to minus lambda one h of x minus h minus lambda two absolute value absolute value g of x okay well lambda one and lambda two uh, are some positive uh, real numbers which we really have to tune and so you have to kind of play around with these and start finding uh, what values uh, work well and end up having your fitness improve uh, with time um, and oh yeah, as you can see from this, if you end up with an individual where uh, f of x naught is equal to zero, then this tells us that these x noughts uh, solve the particular problem I have. Make sense so far? Good, excellent. Right, okay. So once we've defined these two functions, this is really stiff, this board. Once we define these two functions, phi and f, we can now actually begin the kind of genetic process, and that goes as follows. So a, step a, uh, we begin by generating an initial population. Okay, some random population of creatures, or of bit strings, I guess at this point. Okay, so say, I don't know, 100 randomly generated just binary strings of a fixed length, such that I can put them into phi. Okay, uh, we then sort these correspond to the fitness. Okay, uh, and just for concreteness of what the next line is going to be, I'm going to sort these in descending order. Okay, so the first element. Uh, is highest fitness, highest fitness. Okay. Uh, so now using this population, my initially randomly generated population here, I can now start generating my future populations um, by drawing from these. So at random, draw two individuals from this, the two creatures, uh, with uh, well, yeah, with the following probability distribution. Okay, so the kth individual uh, has the following probability to be selected. P of K is two over one plus alpha. And I'll define what these symbols mean in a moment. One plus N minus K over n minus one, alpha minus one. Okay. Uh, where uh, in that equation, n is the size of the population, and alpha uh, is some parameter of the algorithm which also needs to be tuned, uh, which lies between one and well, is essentially unbounded from above. Okay. But for all practical purposes, normally you'll take this to be that alpha is somewhere between two and six is normally a good kind of starting place uh, for running these algorithms. If any of my handwriting is unclear or anything, or I said anything too quick, just cut out questions. Right, okay. So I draw two individuals at a time from my distribution, uh, from, my, uh, from my population. Um, maybe it should be clear here, I've got A and then two. Let's say A, B. Be consistent. 
Okay, so now I have to cross over the individuals I've drawn. So let's say I drew the following two individuals. Let's say I drew 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, and 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. Okay, then I now randomly roll the dice and I see what I end up with and I have to choose a point to then cross these two bit strings. So based on the question uh, this morning, this is done at random for every single time. And let's say it was chosen to be the second slot. So we then take those two and we cross over. Uh, or breed these two individuals, and what we're left with is one zero. Let me keep the line in for now. Zero one one, and uh, zero one zero one zero. Okay. So all that's happened is I've just crossed over these two first parts here. So this part, this one down there, and this part, this one down there. Now, if you were to run this, you would actually find that the average fitness of your, uh, if, if you just stop at this stage, just do this for the entire population, what you'll find is that the, uh, the average fitness of your population does increase. However, you'll find that the fittest individual basically doesn't change. You're essentially stuck in some local minima. So you need a little bit of randomness added here in order to escape from that local minima. Uh, and that's done by having a small probability uh, of a mutation. So there is some random small probability on top of this. That was C, so it'd be. Mutation. So for each bit, we have a small probability, which is a good starting point. Again, another hyperparameter of the theory here, but a good starting point is roughly one over, well, is roughly that there'll be one mutation per individual. Is a roughly good starting point. So is there a question there? Ah, I see what you're saying. Why, why, have I, why am I doing this when there's no contribution to fitness? Yeah, you're right. Okay, I was a bit quick there. Uh, there are lots of possibilities here. In particular, if you look it up, you'll find there's something called roulette wheel selection, which does exactly that. This is just the simplest option I'm going for. But there's loads of different ones you can go. This is called ranking selection. You can also choose, yeah, this roulette wheel one or other stuff, which then do take the fitness into account. Right, okay. So anyway, so each bit has a small probability of mutation and you roughly want this to be then, that you'll have one mutation per bit string. So yeah, probability is then one over uh, the number of bits in each bit string, roughly, as a good starting point. Oh, sorry, each individual. So each individual, its phenotype has some bit string, some series of bits. Okay. Right. Okay. So if I took these two individuals, just to keep going with this, you could then imagine then that Sorry. these two. Hello, hello. Yeah. Um, I'm a bit confused about the the breeding of the uh, what is it called bits yeah. because. If you just take two bit strings and you relate them in this way, isn't there a chance that your outcome is going to be completely unrelated to the previous bits because you're not really like, for example, averaging between two numbers? Yeah. At the point of breeding, it's kind of like that it it inherits attributes from the previous strings. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a problem? Well, you if you right? just because mix it, them together like this? Yeah, I mean, that will matter more depending on this map phi. And then there might be some tuning of this map that maybe would assist this. but. So, so you are going to try to find a map phi such that you can do those uh, cuttings and yeah, they still, exactly. okay, yeah. all right. And you might find maybe certain maps might be more efficient than others. Okay, Yeah. thanks. Okay, so um, yeah, so just as an example, following up from this, we could end up with the following uh, two individuals. So the first one could have say uh, two mutations. So we could end up with one, one, uh, what do you, uh, zero, one, zero. Should have chosen something other than blue. One, zero. Or maybe the other one doesn't change at all. Zero, one, zero, one, zero. Okay. Right. So once I've done this, now you just have to put this on repeat. So, uh, so repeat from step B. Until 
uh, you have a new population. Yep, so it's in a new population of the original size, so size n. Okay, um, then once you've done that, you now start from, uh, so now step F, repeat from A. With this as the initial population. I don't randomly generate a population this time. Instead, take this uh, as your input. And after tuning the hyperparameters, if you've tuned them well, what you'll find is the average population, average fitness, sorry, will increase, as well as the best fitness will increase as in the fitness of the fittest individual in the population should increase as you do this with each generation. Okay. So are there any questions about that? I'm gonna show you some example code. Yep. So what, why is this a good idea? Is that the question? So actually, to be honest, there is a lot of debate. I think, well, Steve spoke about it this morning a little bit, um, about this schema theory. Um, and there is a huge amount of debate about why genetic algorithms work in the computer science literature. And as far as I'm aware, there is basically no consensus. So there is this schema stuff, and then maybe you can kind of see how this would help with that. Um, but uh, you can find examples where genetic algorithms definitely work, but where there are no schemas at all in your population. So it's really not obvious. I don't have a good answer for this because I don't think anyone has a good answer for this. Right? Except yeah, you put them on the computer and you say go, and it works. That's, <laughs> that's empirical evidence. Yeah. Do you, um, do you kill, so for going from one generation to another, do you kill off every single individual? Oh, yeah, sorry, that's an extra step. That's kind of a, an optional step that's here. So there is between E and F, there is this elitism step. Okay, and so all this does, you don't necessarily have to kill off the worst one, but you remove an element from the population and you copy in what was your best individual from the previous generation. And you're right, maybe it's better to remove the worst one, but you don't necessarily have to. But you kill off some, some of the... You kill off, you, you kill off one, and maybe you, you're probably right that killing off the worst one is probably a good idea, but you don't have to. Yeah, no, it sounds really bad when you're talking about, the, <laughs> when you're talking about these, yeah? Kill off one and then you... And you copy in the best one from the previous generation. Yeah. But that's an option. You don't have to do that. Yeah, you can use other things. So people do play around with this, but the examples I'm going to be showing you are just with binary. Sorry, I think Lucas wants you to have the microphone. Yes. Does it make a difference to the convergence? Uh, probably, yeah, depending on the problem at hand. But it will depend, again, probably on yeah, whatever particular problem you're looking at. In fact, if you look up genetic programming, you're actually playing with trees of expressions as well. So you can go quite extreme there. Right. Okay. So let me talk a little about this just example code then for a moment. So this is the code that uh, you can either follow the link up there or is linked on the website. And it's probably a good idea for you all to download now because the exercises are going to be to start editing this code. And I'm just going to talk you through uh, what's going on here. So to begin with, sorry, so this is actually, I should say what the problem is I'm trying to solve first. So this is looking at taxi cab numbers. So this is the thing that um, Steve was talking about this morning. Uh, so taxi cab numbers, uh, they are, okay, I'm talking to a room, this is really section two now. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so yeah, I'm talking to a room of mathematicians and physicists. So I'm not gonna repeat the story about Hardy and Ramanujan, um, but, uh, Essentially, it's the following thing. You're looking for integers. Uh, you're looking for some integer n, uh, greater than zero, I should say. 
such that a cubed plus b cubed is equal to c cubed, c cubed plus d cubed is equal to n, where a, b, c, and d are all integers are all greater than, well, you can put greater or greater or equal to zero. It doesn't make much difference because if you say equal to, yeah, if you say greater or equal to, then by Fermat's last theorem, you're actually ruled out from this ever happening. Um, but uh, where these uh, are never equal. So these are two unique ways. Okay, so an integer that can be written is the sum of two cubes in at least two different ways. Okay. Right, so that's the problem I want to solve with genetic algorithms, and that's what this code is doing here. So to begin with, I'm just importing just some standards, uh, some standard libraries, just uh, numpy, matplotlib, and random. Uh, and now I define um, a series of hyperparameters. So some of these are the ones I was talking about before. So alpha is the, uh, this, uh, this parameter that appears in my probability for drawing function, to drawing creatures from the, uh, from the population. Uh, other things like population size, how many creatures are actually in my population. Um, number of generations I'm going to run for is 200 in this case, and I set my mutation rate, so this probability of flipping each bit, to be 1 over, uh, 1 over 25. And I also allow um, for elitism. So choosing alpha in this mutation rate, again, is some amount of tuning that's required. But as you see, they'll be pretty close to the ranges I put on the board here as kind of a first uh, starting suggestion. Um, also then, the number of bits I put down here, so 5 times 4. So the reason for that is I'm going to just try and learn my phenotype is going to be A, B, C, and D. And I'm just going to allow each one to be described by five different, uh, five different bits. Okay. I've now just defined a couple of um, standard functions that will be very useful for the kind of thing we're doing. There's this one function here that you give it a list uh, and it goes through and it removes any duplicates, which will be quite useful when I end up with my list of uh, terminal states at the end. You'll probably find that your final population has your best state a large number of times. Um, and also then another function here which I give it a list uh, of binary digits, and it returns what uh, number that corresponds to uh, in base 10. Okay. So now I come to my fitness function, uh, and you can see it does as follows. What it does is it looks at the binary string. Right down here. It looks at the binary string, and then each five digits, Okay, it takes this one and it calls this one X, takes this one, calls it Y, takes the next one Z, X1, W, uh, and then it will convert those using this bits to integer function uh, into base 10, and that will correspond, okay, I've changed X, Y, Z, W, rather A, B, C, D, but then converts them to that, those candidate solutions. Then the fitness is just essentially uh, the defining property of this defining equation for my uh, taxi cab numbers, where I've just moved everything onto the left hand side. So that if I do have a, a taxi cab number, it's equal to zero. Um, and then squared it, so this is always positive, then a minus such that the overall fitness is negative. So this, when this fitness is maximized, will correspond to at least a number to begin with that is, uh, can be written uh, as the sum, of two, uh, the sum of two cubes in at least two ways, but not necessarily unique ways, which is why, sorry, in two different ways. Uh, which is why I have this extra constraint here that if x is equal to z or equal to w, then we get an extra negative to my uh, fitness function. And again, this 500 takes some level of tuning, but playing around with it, you can eventually uh, get something that seems to work well. Okay. I then define a class, which is my creature class. Uh, so this is just, it has three different uh, elements in it. One is the bits, so this is the bits that define each creature, the values, so a, b, c, and d, or x, y, z, w. Uh, and the fitness, okay? So which is in the fitness function uh, described above. So here's just an example of using it. So if I give it an empty list, it will generate a random state. Uh, and we can see this is what it is. So it has these, uh, uh, these bits, which correspond to these four different uh, integers, so A, B, C, and D, with this very bad fitness. I mean, this is pretty far uh, from corresponding to a taxi cab number. Um, then after that, I define uh, two new functions. One that will have my crossover, so I give it two different creatures, and it will randomly find a point to uh, cut the two strings along there, and then do this crossover as described. Oh, it's right at the start, up here, num bits. Yeah, so it's four, four variables with five bits in each one. 
Okay. Um, and then mutation as well. So if I give it one, if you just give mutate uh, a single individual, it will mutate it as described there with the probability also defined for M rate right at the start. Okay, and then here are just some examples of using these functions. So if you generate two random creatures, then you can, uh, you can then put crossover between the two of them and you can mutate the two of them. And so you can see here, for example, that, okay, so this is my original individual. Annoyingly, this is one of the two lines, but you can see the line below, it's the same up until, uh, where does it change? Same up until this point, where now this will correspond to the end of the other individual from the first line, okay? And then after that, I then mutate these two individuals. So if we again look at the first one, has there been any change? Uh, yeah, so that one here has changed to a zero here on this particular bit string. Well, the second one, uh, I think has just happened to have no mutations. The second one hasn't changed at all um, from the mutations there. Okay, then I just have my actual genetic algorithm here. So to begin with, we generate a random population. Uh, and I also just, and the weights here are just to do with the defining the probability of drawing a particular individual and just going through that, uh, this probability here, just sorting it out ahead of time. I then sort my population by, uh, by its fitness. And then I then start looping over each generation. So for each generation I go in, I draw things in the population, I cross them over, I mutate them and I add them to the new list. And then if the elitism is allowed, uh, I then go and I remove the last individual in my list with what was the best individual of the previous uh, the previous generation. So in this case, I have just taken one out of random. I haven't taken out the, the worst individual, but you can do that instead. Um, and then, yeah, then I then sort this new list and repeat that generation again. Okay. Now I just do a little bit of analysis at the end. So I go back through all of my, uh, all of my generations and I look at see what was the average fitness uh, at each step and what was the best fitness at each step and were there any that corresponded to terminal states. Well, terminal states in this case is a, uh, is a taxi cab number. Uh, and you can see we end up with the following, uh, the following results. So this is how the average fitness changes with time. Uh, so it starts off very, very low, uh, but by the end of this, you find that you have some very, uh, some, uh, the average uh, fitness is actually starting to get quite close to zero. And in fact, the best one, you can see that actually already by, wait, I didn't have to go anywhere near as long as 200 generations, but probably of the order of what, 18 or 19 generations, this seems to have maxed out. And we can check, yeah, there were some terminal states. So my remove redundancy uh, uh, function that I wrote uh, was somewhat dumb. It didn't take into account, so remove, yeah, remove uh, duplicates in a list is what I did for this. It did something kind of dumb. It didn't take into account the fact that there's a Z2 times Z2 redundancy here, just looking at A and B and C and D, which is why I have a few different things appearing uh, as terminal states, despite really being the same taxi cab number. And you can check, this is a taxi cab number and the number is 1729, which is the number that uh, I'm using uh, new of. So, any questions about the example code? I'm sure there'll be some as you start looking over them, but any immediate questions? Nope. Okay. So, if you go back to the website, then uh, you can find again this link to this PDF uh, where there'll be some exercises. And so, to begin with, if you can look at 1A, so this is. Uh, let me just write this down here. Okay, so to begin with, you're gonna start with 1A, which is to, you, you wanna modify the code I wrote, uh, which requires you to do two things. You have to change uh, the fitness function somewhat, and also just change a little bit of the analysis at the end as well, because there's no more terminal states in this case. And I want you to modify it such that you're using GA, uh, to find minim a minima, an absolute minima, of a multivariable function. Uh, where crucially those variables, I'm gonna say you can live in a box and I don't care if the, the minima you find is a turning point of the function. It could be the edges of the box. You can allow those, you don't have to worry about these, uh, taking care of those separately. So that's your, that's your task for the next while. And then I'm gonna give some example code in a moment. And if you get through this, um, if, you, if you manage to finish this in this half an hour, then there are some extension tasks you could do. So you could go over uh, 1B, let me say extension. If not, uh, you can think of these as homework. You can go over 1B. 
Uh, I wouldn't start question two now because I will introduce that in about half an hour or so, and I'll also show solutions uh, to that one. Or question, then question four, and lastly, question three would be the order of trying these extension tasks. Right. So, yeah, I'll start walking around if you guys want to try and do this. And uh, are there any burning questions before you start? No? Nope. All right, well, go ahead. Sorry, just to make it clear, that's to approximate the minimum of a function, not to actually treat it continuous. You can put it on some, uh, some kind of grid. And uh, actually, just to be a little bit more concrete, the example I'll show you in a little bit will be the following. Um, but you don't have to do this one, just any function is fine. But I'm just going to write it here uh, for comparison. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna present now quickly uh, a potential solution to this. Don't worry if you didn't finish it. Um, these are all also, there's more exercise in the sheet than was expected uh, to go through in class. So there is absolutely no worries. Um, feel free to suggest these to be, uh, oh, Andre asked me to write homework as well for this. So they are homework as much as they are for, the, uh, for this. Um, right, okay, so if you follow, go to this following link. Mm -hmm. So tinyurl.com, .com, it's very important slash ga, uh, sorry, yeah, slash ga dash ox that's dash min. And there's a solution here. I'll ask uh, Andre as well if he can put these on the website maybe um, after this session. Um, it's just a potential solution. So it's, um, and this is how I then suggested to, uh, to solve this. So it starts off essentially the same as the previous example. Um, but now uh, I uh, define a few extra hyperparameters. So in particular, I then specify the size of my uh, of my box. So I'm saying that each of my variables live uh, between zero and 10. Uh, now I only have uh, three variables and I'm gonna allow seven bits mm -hmm. for each, uh, each variable. So the total number of bits is seven times two. Okay, and then I just define the function that I wrote, uh, that I've written uh, over here. Okay, um, things continue mostly the same until I reach the fitness function. So this time I now split my bit string rather than into four sections, I'm seeing it into three sections and then converting each of these bits, uh, smaller bit strings into an integer, okay? Um, with those integers, I then use that to mark points on a lattice, okay? So I have my 10 by 10 by 10 uh, space in the, uh, in the reals, and I'm just splitting that up into even, uh, evenly spaced intervals, such that uh, all ones correspond to 10 and all zeros corresponds to, uh, to zero, okay? So this is all living on one big, uh, big grid, uh, and each creature corresponds to uh, a random point uh, on, that, uh, on that grid, okay? The fitness then, since I want to find the minima, is just minus the value of the function at that point, okay? So, I, the, yeah, so in terms of when this will be maximized will be when uh, I have, um, well, I'm at a minima, okay? Everything else basically continues the same. A slight difference in the, uh, in the analysis as well wherein that uh, I'm saving the best uh, state I found. There's no idea of a terminal state in this one anymore. It's just, what is the highest fitness I'm able to find um, throughout this entire uh, run of the genetic algorithm? Um, and then you find the following that happens. You find again that the average fitness uh, increases very quickly. Uh, the best fitness also does as well. Uh, and what you'll find is if you run this is that this state will turn up to be the best state overall. Okay, so this is almost a quarter zero, zero, and actually if you go through uh, and do this analytically, you find that this is actually correct. In this case, you can show that the maxima, sorry, that the minima is actually at a quarter zero, zero, and so this is basically the closest point I can get to on my grid um, to, that, uh, to that minima. Okay, so again, you can find the solution there if you want to look at it in uh, any more detail, but are there any questions about this solution before I um, quick talk about another, uh, another problem? Sorry? Yes. Yeah. I thought it's 
Oh yeah, I probably I think I flipped my bit strings. That's probably all that's gone wrong here. Yeah, that's probably all that's gone wrong. Okay. Yeah, no, I have actually. You're right. Yeah, yeah, I didn't even think about that. No, you're right. As I've written this function, you're you're exactly correct. I've written it actually the wrong way around. My bit string has gone backwards, but it's the same. Yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Okay. Any other any other questions? No. All good. Okay. So then the other uh, problem I'm going to quickly talk about here. Uh, is this knapsack problem. Okay, so this is question two uh, on the PDF. We'll come back to this. Okay, so a knapsack problem. Uh, and this goes as follows. Uh, for a knapsack problem, uh, let me do this here. This is question, uh, question 2A on the sheet. Uh, what we have is the following. Uh, we consider uh, we have a list of items. Okay, each of which has a value and a weight. Both of which are positive, uh, are positive real numbers. Okay, we also uh, have a uh, a maximum uh, a maximum allowed weight. So the weight the the total weight that can be carried um, by our uh, by uh, by our bag, so max weight W, which is also a positive real number. Okay, and the aim of the next problem is as follows: the aim is to find uh, is to maximize the value in the bag so that is to maximize. The following sum. So sorry, no, I want to say maximize. Sorry. Uh, okay. We want to find a subset. Let me rewrite that. Aim. Find a subset of these items such that we maximize at the total value in the bag such that we don't go over our weight uh, allocation. Okay. So that's the problem in this case. So I'm going to try and write this as a genetic algorithm. Uh, also, I would like to write down an example case quickly on the board as well. So the one that will be uh, in a solution I'll give um, as well at the end. Uh, and this is another extension to this. Uh, two, uh, two B and two C uh, across wanting to now think about the possibility of having multiple bags and then trying to take all items and uh, stuff like that. Uh, but anyway, so the example I want you to look at, if you, um, well, an example you can look at, you can look at any example you want, but the one that will be in the solution will be that W is equal to 15. And these are the following items. So just get started whenever you want, and I'll again start uh, walking around. But also feel free to work on the earlier, um, on the earlier problem as well if you want to. Okay. Any questions before I start walking around? Excellent, right, I'll start walking around. Okay, so there's been some confusion about how you might encode this. So I'll just quickly um, talk about how you might do that. So in particular, all the previous times there's been uh, some kind of value, and then you've been splitting the bit string into appropriate 
yeah, into quarters or thirds, depending if you have three or four, uh, three or four variables. And this one feels a little bit different, but actually it's not really. Um, it's just that each variable you have only requires one bit. So the simplest way of doing it would be as follows. It would be that you have a bit string um, of length of the number of items you have. Okay, so in this case, 10, 10, a bit string of length 10. Then if, you, if it's a one, it means you put that item in the bag. If it's a zero, that item is not in the bag. Okay, maybe that might help uh, some people with the encoding. All right, okay. Um, so just to finish up, I'll show you then uh, my solution to this. Um, so you can get it at the following URL. So again, tinyurl.com slash da slash ox slash napsol. Um, and I did it in the following way. So uh, I gave the list of items, as I was saying before, and a particular bag size, a bag size 15. And as I was describing the particular encoding, um, it is just the length of the number of items, okay? And so if it's a one, it means I put that item in the bag. If it's a zero, the item uh, is not in the bag, okay? So then modifying my fitness function slightly, um, what I did was follows. I considered, I added up the, uh, the total weight and total value um, of the items that were decided to be, uh, that were put in the bag. If, however, I overshot the weight condition, um, I then set the fitness to be the, uh, well, kind of, uh, by how far the weight condition was overshot, okay? So it gets penalized as a negative fitness if you overshoot that weight condition. However, if the weight condition is satisfied, then instead the fitness is just the value of the, the total value of the items um, in the bag, okay? So if you then go through and uh, try and solve this with GA, everything basically continues as before. Um, again, with a um, slightly modified um, uh, analysis at the end of this, but you'll find that the average fitness uh, increases quite steadily and the number of terminal states as well, you can see very quickly at about 10 generations, it's actually found the best, uh, the best state, which has um, a fitness, so it has a value of 14. So value, the 14 is the value in the bag. And so these items were the ones uh, put in the bag for that particular, um, that particular solution. Right, okay. So that's basically the end of the tutorial. Um, so there are other questions on here which you can do as homework if you want. So there's follow-up questions to both the ones you've done, um, as well as another problem to actually just write your own version of genetic algorithm rather than uh, modifying uh, my code. And another one that's looking at magic squares. So in particular, um, trying to find a magic square of square numbers which may not actually exist, but it could be fun to try and search for using uh, genetic algorithms. Right, are there any questions before finishing up? Take over. Thank you very much, Thank you, Helen.